American history teaches us about the colonization of North America, such as what the Spanish, French, and British did as they colonized the land, but it never if rarely mentions the Russian influence that happened on the West Coast. Because in fact, not only did Russia control Alaska, they had a whole territory in Northern California in the 1800s, and they lived in harmony with the natives. American history would ignore this in their history books for some reason, as they do a lot of things. That's why we're here to tell you the facts. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen. So during colonialism in the 1700s, it is quite known that English, French, and Spanish were going all over the world, and particularly North America, to colonize and take resources, as well as force religion on the natives. But the Russians took a different approach after expanding out to the Pacific Ocean under the rule of Peter the Great. They already had more land in the world than anyone, so colonizing wasn't an objective. It was more about the trade. They sailed over to Alaska and claimed it, but they did not try to influence the natives. And in fact, they worked with them. The Russians then set up a sea otter fur trade business and established the Russian American Company. The Russian American Company was headed by Alexander Andreevich Barana, who was named the Russian governor of America by Peter the Great himself. They got word of the sea otters and agricultural land out in California and figured it would make sense to supply their Alaskan territory. So in 1803 they sailed out to the Californian coast just above San Francisco which was above Spanish territory and they landed on what is known as Sonoma County, California with the guide of Russian Japanese ambassador Nikolai Rozanov and they quickly established a trade route with the Spanish. Nikolai would see how rich the land and sea was and convince Barnoff to build a settlement there known as Fort Ross. The name was short for Russia and they would use it to supply their Alaskan territory. Ivan Kuskov, the Russian commerce counselor, was sent in to build a fort in Sonoma, California and Barnoff sent out two ships to claim the Northern California land with plaques in 1808. Then in 1809, Barnoff ordered an agricultural system to be set up and he moved about 125 Russians to the fort to live. There was also about 100 native Alaskans who came to work as laborers living on the fort or around it. Kuskov also established the Russian River, a route they used that runs from Sonoma to Santa Rosa, California, and it still flows with the same name today. Then in 1812, Fort Ross was officially built on Redwood Wood, about 15 miles north of a native tribe called the Kashaya Pomo, which the Russians got along with. Unlike the Spanish, they didn't force Christianity on them, even though they had a chapel at the time and the natives actually converted on their own free will. And although the fort was a commercial post there, was about 15 and 40 cannons set up as well as guarded outposts for protections, as the Russians were heavily outnumbered by both the Spanish and the Mexicans. The first 10 years of Fort Ross were unprofitable, and there was a lot more expenses and a lot of maintenance as the fort was mainly used to supply Russians in Alaska with food. Fort Ross also had small settlements around it, and the area was dubbed Colony Ross, stretching from Point Arena to Tamales Bay. And by 1817, sea otters had practically been wiped out in the area from aggressive trade hunting, which the Spanish and the British also participated in. So Russians would establish agricultural areas inland and also build the first windmills and shipyards on the west coast to keep the production up. They also sent in the first scientists to study and record California's cultural and natural history. It's also funny enough, the first vaccination in California history was carried out at Fort Ross on the natives who suffered from smallpox and malaria due to Europeans arriving. The Russians always helped the natives, of course, a lot of them died because there wasn't enough vaccines. The surgeon at the time could only vax up to 54 people. But the natives trusted him because they were a safeguard against the Spanish. And in 1938, Fort Ross was no longer needed to supply Alaska as Russians were ready to sell both territories. Over the years, Fort Ross would be shopped and eventually sold off in 1841 to John Sutter, a Mexican citizen of Swiss origin, for about $20,000 in notes and gold, which covered a lot of debt the fort had built up. And on January 1st, 1842, the last 100 Russians sailed out the fort and left the land. 
Even though the Russian-American company expansion in California lasted about 30 years, the memory effect on the natives and land left a positive impact, as well as native Alaskan influence on the Kashaya Pomo language and culture. The Russians were the first to explore and map a lot of Northern California, and they were also the first known Europeans to climb Mount St. Helena. The abandonment of Fort Ross was the first act the Russians would draw from North America altogether. The Russian-American company itself would decline and eventually seize operations in 1862, and Russia would sell off Alaska to the U.S. in 1867 and abandon its North American trade to focus on the two continents it was already established on, because costs of continuing to maintain the outposts in America were adding up, especially with growing British presence that they didn't get along with, so it made sense to cut the costs. During its time under Russian rule, not once did the settlement get threatened by attack and most people who lived there said it was the best time of their lives. In 1932, the fort was made the fifth historical landmark in California and today it still stands and hosts Russian-American relation meetings as well as tours for the public. So if you ever want to see a piece of old Russian culture on U.S. soil, come visit the fort and check it out for yourself. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen.